Well, it's uh, great to be here. Hello, everybody. Um, and uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, All Things Open was a long time on my bucket list of uh, uh, visiting and speaking. Unfortunately, you know, we can we can only do it uh, virtual for for this year, but I really hope we will do it in person next year. There was a rally is another one on my bucket list that I also hope to do uh, to speak at one day and hopefully in person in April. Definitely going to submit to the CFP, and you all should do that too. Submissions are open, and it's a great event, and you really really should do that. Um, so thanks to uh, the default of Zoom of sending the chats to everybody. Now you already know how to pronounce my name. That's good. And now we can talk about um, about the implementing container image promotion pipelines. Um, and uh, so one thing to note before we kind of dive in, well, you, you all know that there are more containers than, than a Docker, but still, uh, for a lot of industry and for a lot of people, including myself, most of the time when we say uh, when we say container, we we mean Docker. And I guess this is how I'm going to use um, this term today, kind of interchangeably. So this is the idea. And with Docker, as with almost every software that you encounter, it's this Venn diagram applies. It's kind of um, a love and hate relationship the more you know how the sausage is made, the less uh, you like the sausages. And with Docker, it's the same. It's an amazing technology, revolutionary, and it, it revolutionized how we uh, develop software. The whole concept is that if it only works on your machine, just go ahead and ship your machine to production is, is obviously amazing. And this is uh, what we've been doing. And uh, But there is something that bothers us when we work with Docker. And goes back to the same idea that we'll just ship our machine. What if what we ship in this machine is not exactly perfect? Uh, so yeah, my name is Baruch Sadogurski. I'm the chief sticker officer at JFrog. If we were in a physical conference, we'll probably get some stickers right about now. For now, I will just play the head of DevOps advocacy role um, and um, uh, we, we are going to talk about containers. I met Jay Baruch on Twitter, as you can see here. Um, this was supposed to be a joint talk with Kat Gosgrove, developer advocate with JFrog. She's amazing. And um, instead of being here with me, she's doing a workshop for you all. And um, in the same time, so this is why she's not here. But the workshop is definitely um, a great and probably better than this talk. But here we are. Um, the most important slide of this talk is the show notes. If you go to jeffrock.com slash show notes, and even more precisely to this link that I'm going to post to you right now in the Zoom chat, uh, this. Uh, you will find the page that with all the slides which are already there, the video I will upload, uh, I will upload as soon as the videos will become uh, public. Uh, all the links to everything that I'm going to mention um, the place to comment, to rate, and a very nice raffle. Thanking you for being here. I think it's a Star Wars Lego set, something something very nice. Um, so let's talk about uh, let's talk about best practices in promotion pipelines. When we are coming to um, talking about a new concept of promotion pipelines for something new, we will ask ourselves: Do we have something that already exists? How we should change it? to match the technology at hand. And with promotion pipelines, um, it's a trivial question. And the answer is yes, of course. We do pipelines for years, for many years, actually. And uh, this is how it looks like. You have the promotion pyramid in which you have less and less builds as the build progress through tests, because less and less builds survive the most elaborate tests, all the way to production when they the selected few are actually going to production. And if you look at this promotion pyramid from the other perspective, this is how it looks like. In a very early stage in your build, uh, your sources are converted to binaries uh, thanks to your CI process, build process. And once this is done, the promotion actually starts. And the promotion is about 
take the binaries that you build and move them through quality gates. If the um, quality requirements are met to the next space. In the next space, they will be uh, deployed to the relevant environment, tested again with different kind of, uh, kind of sets, and again promoted through quality gates to yet next uh, level in the pipeline if they survived and if we decide that um, that this is good. So this is all this is all awesome and uh, um, this is great. But Docker makes it very hard to do it the right thing and very easy to do it the wrong thing. And let's start with easy to do the, right th the wrong thing. The wrong thing is in, 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 in this regard is the Docker build. And Docker build is um, so tempting because it's a very simple format, right? It's just like what, a dozen of commands and you can build almost anything that you want. And it, it takes very little time. And it's so tempting to just Docker build all the things. And by Docker build all the things, I mean, it's tempting to promote the Docker file instead of promoting the actual binary. If we can Docker build in every environment, that sounds like a good idea because it's very convenient that we don't need to carry any binaries around. We can actually just go ahead, retag our Docker file, and then uh, you know um, uh, retag it from um, uh, system test to uh, staging, and 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 we're done, and just rebuild. Easy, right? It is easy. It's not always good, and it's not always good because. Um, you know what, here I wanted to do like for, for the demonstration, I wanted to build like a ridiculously fragile Docker file that will break and will produce different results. And then I went to the internet and it turns out that I don't need to invent anything. The internet is full of horrible Docker files. This is one of them. And this is a real deal. If you go to jeffrey.com show notes, you will find there a, a Git link to this exact file and it's horrible and it's horrible because every line in this docker file refers to a resolution of dependency of a latest version and obviously this is horrible because it means that every time you rebuild there are very very high chances that you will end up with different result this different result might not necessarily build, break your build or break your tests, but it will for sure be not what you intended there to be in the first place. And then you can say, well, Baruch, that's just because you didn't write it correctly. You can fix it. And we can try and fix it. For example, we can nail down the base image version. We can say, hey, let's just use Ubuntu 19.04. Does it help? Well, to an extent, we for sure won't get the latest version, which is what, 2010? Uh, 2010? Oh, oh my God, it's October. Yeah, 2010. But it doesn't mean that we will get the same 1904 that was published on April 2019. Because Docker tags are mutable. Because people can push and canonical as a... Uh, as a publisher of Ubuntu, can push additional changes to an existing Docker image. This is horrible. So what we can do, what really works, checksums or fingerprints. Now this not gonna change for sure. But the problem with that is that, do you know which version of Ubuntu I'm using now? Do I know which version of Ubuntu I'm using now? How can I even know that it's a valid checksum and not my cat just walks over my keyboard and this is what it typed? We have no idea. Now, Docker base image is only one part of the puzzle. How about those? Can we nail down those versions? Well, it depends on the tool. If you know apt-get, you might decide if you can nail them down or not. How about this? How about Maven clean install? Well, again, if you don't know Maven, you can say, well, probably there should be a way to pin the dependencies, but I don't know. 
If you know Maven, you will say, well, yes, you can pin the dependencies. If you know Maven really well, you will say, well, no, you probably can't. And you know what? It's all about how well you know the internals of the commands that you are running. But you know what? How about that? In the end of the day, no matter what, if you rebuild, you have a very high chance of getting different results. And this is exactly why you have this feeling that I'm not sure of what I'm running now is exactly what I wanted to, uh, to create, right? And because you rebuild it in every environment and there is a high chance that you will up, end up with different results. So what do we do instead? Instead, we create, we build promotion pipelines that promote immutable and standalone binaries. Exactly as the diagram that I showed you in the beginning. You build only once, and then you have this Docker image that you promote through quality gates, one after another through the environment. And I keep talking about these gates and what's up with those gates. Well, those gates are crazy important because those gates are the ones that guarantee that you won't end up with images that are premature to a certain environment in this environment. And it's especially critical, obviously, in production. You need to make sure that whatever gets to production actually passed the entire pipeline. And how do you do that? How can you ensure that those gates are as rigid as possible? Let's see a couple of examples. Basically, the question that we want to answer is, how do we, oops, sorry. How do we separate development from production? There are a number of options. Option number one, Docker metadata, and that's Docker label. In Docker, you can add key value pairs to basically everything, including Docker images. And then you can say, my, lab, my key will be maturity and my value will be uh, dev, QA, staging, production. Nice? Well, not bad, but not great. It's not great because it's just strings and you can mistype them and you can forget to annotate the images and the admission to the runtime cluster of your environment cannot check the right labels on the right images. It's too loose. Well, then we can use Docker repositories. Docker repositories are powerful because they allow you to um, use RBAC control. RBAC controls is allowing only the right usernames to access the right repositories. And then you can provide different credentials to different environments, and this is how you limit them. Is it better? Probably. Is it good enough? Well, not really. And it's not really good enough because Docker registries is a Docker repositories is a concept brought from GitHub repositories. And GitHub repositories don't have, sorry, don't have the maturity aspect. We don't have in GitHub repositories for development, staging, and production. Instead, it's a repository per project. And this is how it's supposed to be in Docker Hub as well. So once we have repositories per project, we still don't have the separation between maturity. The only way to ensure a really rigid quality gates is to separate registries per environment. Now this actually works. When you have, when this one will be your integration registry, your integration cluster will only be able to pull Docker images and run Docker images from integration uh, maturity. And obviously in production, we'll only see this registry as the only registry in the world. It won't know about anything else. And this will guarantee that whatever is not here, not in this registry, whatever won't promote, wasn't promoted, won't end up in promotion. Great, great. Not so fast with Docker. Not so fast with Docker because Docker have kind of strange limitation 
that it was completely unnecessary by any means, but it exists and we have to live with it. And this limitation is what we can define as a registry. And you can see here in the tagging command of, uh, of, of, of a Docker image that you can specify a host, a port, a username, and then the, the name of the image. There is no way to specify which exactly registry on this host this image should go to. The question is, how can we have more than one registry per host? How can we have something like this when you have your host and then you can specify the maturity of the exact registry that you want your request, your pull, your push, your tag to go to. So it sounds like somewhere this, someone decided sometime that one registry per host should be enough for everybody. But I hope I convinced you that is not, that we want more than one host. So what do we do? We can use virtual posts, ports and virtual hosts. We can do something like that. So this is our command, docker tag host port and the tag name. And this is how it translated to the request, to the HTTP request uh, that goes into the registry. And instead of going there, we wanted to go to Docker dev. How can we do it? We can do a URL rewriting. And this is an example from Nginx. Um, similar examples can um, you can find for um, Apache, HTTPD, and for um, HAProxy and others. But the idea is that this port 5001, um, when it gets the request, it will know to forward it to Docker Dev. 5002 will know how to forward it to Docker Staging. 5000, that will be our Docker prod, etc., etc. So we can do that and it works, but it's a lot of hassle. It means that you need to have this uh, another component, this HTTP uh, rewriting tool um, kind of in front of your registry. And it's just like another thing to take care of and babysit. Instead, we can abuse something that we don't use outside of the context of the Docker Hub. And that will be the user. The username is intended for Docker Hub because it's intended to specify who are the owners of a, a particular uh, image. So in this example, we have HTTPD that maintained by Fedora. The Ubuntu that we looked uh, earlier, their username will be canonical. Great. But when we everything is ours and we manage our own images, and when we talk about promotion pipeline is for images that we built, we don't need to specify the users. It's our, it's us. So instead we can use this token to specify the maturity of the registry we want this Docker image to be in. And this is how we can have managed host 5,000 and then dev, testing, staging, prod, whatever we need. So this is great. Now, now you start thinking, okay, now I have multiple images in the same tool under different proxies. How do I promote from one Docker, Docker proxy to another? Because when they were in the different hosts, you had to pay the network penalty anyway, because you download from one host, you retag, you push it to another host, there are different hosts, you pay the network price, fine. But now when all of them are actually in the same tool, downloading them, renaming them and pushing them back to the same place doesn't mean any, doesn't, doesn't mean any sense. Doesn't make any sense. And the problem is here that you cannot work around it with like tools like Nginx proxy or any other hacks. You actually need tool that supports this promotion between different uh, Docker registries within one tool. And there are numbers uh, of those tools uh, and um, 
the terminology might differ a little bit between them but the concept is the same so this is the example and the terminology of the jfrog tools which are the um, jfrog container registry which is free and supports all that the jfrog platform which has a three tier and supports all that and also jfrog artifactory all the jfrog tools support exactly that and there are others but this is just what i use for example obviously so uh, what we have here are different types of registries. So first of all, we have the remote proxy, Docker Hub remote. The remote proxy was a convenience feature for us not to go to Docker Hub every day, but now and in, in 11 days from now, it actually becomes one of the most critical features of tools like JFrog Container Registry because it allows you avoiding the new limitations that Docker Hub has starting November 1st. The uh, throttling on the amount of uh, pulls that you can do and the deletion of old images. It actually so solves both pains just by sitting there and caching your um, images that you pulled from Docker Hub. And it does that because obviously they won't be deleted from your local cache. And also after the first request, when you actually proxied it, all the subsequent requests to this Docker image will stop here in your Docker remote proxy and won't get all the way to Docker Hub. So this is kind of, you, you get protected. So this is like a remote. Other types of uh, proxies are the local ones. The, we have here like four, Docker Dev Local, Docker Test Local, Docker Stage Local, and Docker Prod Local. And those are your, this is your promotion pipeline. Those are the different registries. And the well, images will get here by deploying from your CI to um, a virtual repository, virtual proxy. And virtual proxy is like kind of aggregation of different ones. So once it's deployed to this one, it will on, always get to the beginning of the pipeline, to the dev proxy. And then your CI CD tool, your pipeline will trigger promotion using REST API or JFrog CLI. And this is a local promotion. The images are not moving anywhere. They are in the same storage. They are just uh, change their visibility or where they appear. And then when you have your runtime environments for different, um, uh, for different maturity, you have your dev cluster, your test cluster, etc. those clusters only see one registry. Your production cluster only knows about the Docker prod local. It doesn't know about anything else. And this is obviously how you can guarantee the, the, the maturity of what you see in production is always went through the entire pipeline and was served from Docker, Docker prod local. So this is the win-win-win that we are looking for. You have a single point of access for multiple registries when needed. That's the virtual aggregation proxy. You have your completely isolated environments, and that's the different registries that the runtime environments only see one registry at a time. And you have the immediate and free promotion that um, obviously guarantees that you don't move any uh, Docker images around when you need to move it to the next promotion stage. So, and we spoke about how you protect your, uh, uh, your from images, your base images that you downloaded from a Docker Hub and now you own the copy and you are protected against any kind of deletions or limitations on the other side, which is, which is great. But what about the rest of the dependencies? Base images are only one type of the dependencies. And, uh, um, so here, here are how it works, right? You can see here the, um, how the base images are safely stored in uh, the Docker remote cache, but you can also store other dependencies in other type of repositories inside the same tool. So for example, 
or not, for example, what you really should care about are your infrastructure dependencies. And this is a Java application. So obviously you need to take to make sure that you are caching your JDK and your web server in this, in this example, but also your application files. And here is, for example, uh, um, here's, uh, for example, the, your application, the web, um, the web service 1.1.2. Now, this all works in Docker registry, even in the like Jeffro container registry that doesn't support other uh, repository types except of a Docker Helm and generic. That's example to generic. But if you look like at a universal artifact repository like Jeffro Artifactory or Jeffro Platform, um, it actually has a native support for your dependencies. You don't need to save them as just generic files. Instead, you can um, work with it as your dependency management and a, a saving the special type of artifact that your dependencies are. And here you can see here is your Java, where is it the Maven thing? Here is Gradle, here is Maven, but also others like Go and um, yeah, JavaScript and PM and uh, .NET and uh, Python and you name it, right? So that's another very important concept to, uh, to remember. You need to own your dependencies, your base image, your infrastructure up and your uh, application files, your application dependencies and your application files. And you have to own them because you don't know if the source of those dependencies will be up and running and will still serve you your dependencies half a year from now or whatever. And the last concept that I want to talk to you about, you remember how we spoke that we last version is bad and you shouldn't rely on it. Isn't it a shame that it's bad? Isn't it like very convenient? There is a trade-off between static typing and dynamic typing. So the static typing that kind of the case I presented you earlier, it's assigned once and it remains unchanged. So uh, you will use your build number or some kind of a generator to assign a version or tag of a version to your artifact. And you can always refer to this version and make sure that you get the same artifact. And this is good because it provides reproducible builds. Your dependency is always the same. It never changes. And that's obviously a great benefit. But dynamic tagging has its own benefits. First of all, dynamic tagging kind of uh, gives you the latest good state image. And if you remember when we spoke about canonical that might push more to the existing tag on 1904. That's not because they evil and want to break your builds. That's because they want to maintain latest good state image. And if, for example, a security vulnerability is discovered on 1904, canonical will push the fixes to this vulnerability to the same tag. So yes, the 1904 that you will push today will be different from 1904 that was in April last year, but that's for a good reason. So this is important and we want that. And obviously another benefit of having dynamic tagging is the ease of use. It's very easy for me to say, just give me the latest version, what you think it's good and it's good enough for me. And sometimes we want this is of use today. So how can we have the cake and eat it too? Um, uh, well, we need a double tagging. Double tagging means that we will actually have two versions for, um, uh, possibly two versions for a Docker image. But how can it possibly done? And how can we know that it's the same image? And here a metadata can help very much. So we spoke about Docker labeling, that's one way, or you can use your tool to do it automatically for you. And here again, an example of 
Jeffro Container Registry, in which you can see that we have a latest Docker image here, but we actually know exactly to which static tag or final immutable version this latest refers to, and that will be 26. And it might not even be the real latest. We may, might keep building 27 and 28 and whatever versions we want. And then is it latest or not? What the latest refers to? It's very confusing. But once you have this metadata set, you are actually protected from overriding. Uh, sorry, from, from not knowing what latest is. And the beauty of this part is that the management of this double, double tagging is completely automated. You can assign this property when you build your image or in any other way by using, um, again, JFrog um, as CLI or the REST API or even in the UI if you want to. And then you can decide how do you re-tag the versions and how do you associate dynamic tagging with the static tagging? And then the consumption of that is also completely automated. You can read this API uh, by any uh, automated tool. Uh, again, everything that I mentioned, and then it might be a part of your pipeline. And you can say, okay, someone asked for latest, don't, uh, just serve them the tag that is called latest because it might not be the latest. First, check what the version is. If it's really latest, if it's not, maybe give them a warning. You're trying to download the latest, but it's actually not, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So basically, once you have more metadata, you can do more stuff. So with that, just to conclude what we spoke about, you build only once you separate the environments, you promote what you have built and not rebuild on every stage, you own your dependencies. This is kind of the big four. And with that, I'm at Jbarok on Twitter. This is all things open, yay. And um, Jeffrey from the show notes, that's the URL for getting the slides, the video, <coughs> once it's published, um, all the all the links, everything that I mentioned, um, uh, including the Docker file that you hated or I hope you hated, um, and the raffle, the amazing Lego set, and some T-shirts and tons of other goodies. The URL to the show notes is in the chat, so you can go there just by clicking it in the chat. With that, thank you very much. Questions? If you have any, I will be more than happy to answer. All right, thank you, Baruch. Um, I don't see any questions posted. Um, I think we should probably just give the audience a couple minutes to maybe post some questions if they have any. Absolutely. Um, thank you so much for covering that topic. Uh, it's a it's a different take on on distributing uh, container images. So no, yeah. it's oh, always yeah. interesting yeah. to to kind of see a different take on that. And um, I'll definitely be checking out some of those resources you you posted. Um, did you send the link in uh, the chat yet? Yeah, yeah, I did. I did it when I first mentioned the, the show notes in the beginning of the talk. I will actually post it again. Yeah, maybe that right be, now. Okay. There, we there we go. All right. Um, anyone have any questions? Oh, you got a good, awesome talk. Um, yeah. All right. <laughs> Okay, anyway, I think it's it's quite clear now that you yeah. have to invite me to to DevOps days. I mean, look. Hey, I, you know, I'm only one of the organizers, so you know, feel Talk free to chat. feel free to we, submit. We figured out we figured out how to save the chat. Now, <laughs> <laughs> let's do that. No, I'm just kidding. I I understand. And, and yeah, the beauty so the beauty of the de of DevOps days generally is that it's really limited in the time that you know the speakers are preaching from the uh, from the from the scene and everything else is kind of um, uh, just open spaces really and, yeah. and and this is this is great but 
I will definitely. I, yeah, please, please do. And um, another thing that we we like to do on DevOps days is we like to bring in, and and encourage local folks. Right. This is an That's opportunity to bring more the local community together, right? So Absolutely. not to say that, you know, we won't be accepting speakers from all yeah, over the place. I understand but... that you already went into the, <laughs> into the excuses why you rejected me. Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. I'll still submit. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yes, and I encourage everyone to have a talk. Yeah, and here we do have a question. The link is um, above in the chat. Yeah, yeah. We do have a question. Um, is there a resource for more information about dab double tagging? Absolutely. Um, let me check okay. if I remember correctly, we even have a white paper on that. And uh, let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh... <sighs> Give me one sec, I'll just try and, and, and search for it. But in any way, I, I can give you some pointers now. Uh, and th th the way it works basically, it's just uh, you use REST API or, um, uh, or, or JFrog CLI to uh, provide properties which refer to the other tagging. Like I showed you, you have a latest, but you also say it refers to the tag 26 or whatever whatever other tag it is. And then this is how you have two images. You have your 26 submitted, you copy it over. And again, copy is free because the storage is the same. So you copied it over as latest, and then you re-tagged it and made it um, uh, sorry, and then you add this property and said, well, this points to the latest points to 26. And um, I'm trying to find the, um, uh, what will be the best resource? Yeah, I know, I know when to point you, where to point you, let me see. All right, Baruch. Like five um, minutes, right? Yeah, you got five minutes. While you're searching that, uh, Nermal uh, actually has some computer issues, so he has to reboot. So I'll be taking over. <laughs> so. All right. Okay. No worries. No worries. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Maybe I will just find an example, and that will be even better. Um, Here. Yes. Uh, Steve, this is the last session for today for the DevOps track. Um, so yes, this is, uh, I will be closing the session, the webinar after this talk. Okay, let's see if I can find it here. Yeah, no, it will it will take me some digging and I wonder how it what will be the easiest way to actually uh, to pass it over to you guys. You know what? I know what I do. I have the show notes. Uh, let me let me find it, and I will just um, I will just add that will be like a GitHub uh, GitHub pointer to uh, just a number of lines uh, in a build script that does the double tagging, and that will be the the easiest way. I will just add it to the show notes. So um, it's starting to just try it, let's say like later today or tomorrow, and I will just edit there.